Geeks, we are here to continue the game called Narcissu. Um, last time we found out that the girl who is with us had some money and we didn't have to steal gas and we didn't get screwed up because she kind of saved the day. Only she could have saved the day a lot more earlier, but no, you didn't ask. <laughs> Okay, so the next one is chapter five. First wrote. Click it. Every time. <laughs> the first wrote continuing on forever, places unknown. And I loved cars because they could take me anywhere. But no matter how much useless trivia I gained, it was all in my imagination, recently chopping, chipping away at a reality and, and at my heart. I had a swimsuit, I had maps, but I'd, I had no future. There was a world outside my window, but it was nothing that I could touch. If I closed my eyes, I could go to a world without anything in it, but it wasn't as if the real world would disappear for me. I knew all of this. My lifelong companion scars were telling me to get used to this world of closed eyes. And yet, I was still filled with what ifs and dreamed of, wor dreamed of wild possibilities, but eventually, the yearning never progressed past yearning. The bikini swimsuit, the emerald sea, my huge scars told me that I should give up on them already. I spent most of my life in the hospital and amidst this world of closed eyes. It was so sad to be able to choose between 7F and home. No other options given. However, it was sadder still that I couldn't think of any other places anyway. But I've lived on for 22 years like this. When I murmured those words, I felt time, which should have been standing still, begin to move again. That day, my heart, which should have been standing still, was in torment. January 26th, first road, Hiratsuka. The silver cope, whose hood reflected the clear blue skies of winter, wandering around as aimlessly as ever, but at least no more worries about gas or food. Soon enough, we came across a large intersection. I hadn't obtained her approval last night, but I was still heading west regardless. The only problems were that I didn't know where the roads at all, know the roads at all, and it would be tough on our budget to take the tollways. Those were my thoughts as we drew near the large intersection. I was about to continue heading straight without a single thought when... Huh? An abrupt request. Even as I wondered what was up, I turned left as she requested onto a very wide road. What was that about? For now? I was surprised by her sudden direction giving. We'd been together until now, and she seemed to know just about everything. But this was the first time that she'd voluntarily given me directions. Could it be that you've decided you want to go after all? Well, you know, to the place we talked about? To Abaji Island. Are Oh, that's not what I meant at all. We were driving along without any purpose. 
I was floundering in a search of some destination and always enigmatic, she was ever looking into the distance. So the words that had just come out of her mouth took me completely by surprise. Just, what do you think you're saying? She is cute. January 26th. Something something wrote. The silver cope shimmered with sunlight underneath a clear winter sky. We'd passed through the steep slopes and sharp curves of Hakone, and now we're in a much more relatively flat area. Hey, around where are we anyway? We were driving through the normal highways because we were on too limited a budget to use the tollways. I could have never have done this alone, but thanks to her, we were making good progress. Her instructions more accurate than any navigation system. I didn't know why I felt this way, but I could tell that we were on the right track. Got it. I turned the steering wheel and changed lanes as I've been told to do. The scenery streaming past the window, the sights and sound of a city I'd never seen before spreading to the north. And around the time when the wide open spaces around us has transitioned into urban neighborhoods. Hey, wanna stop by there? Some family restaurant at the roadside of the highway. I pointed to it as I drove and kept talking. After all, oh, we've had this convenience store food all the way up until now, right? Of course, it wasn't as if we'd been dining on convenience store food because we liked it. There was the fact that we had no money. And there was also the fact that we were on the edge. But now we had a little money to spare. That's why I just suggested it. After all, a family restaurant can be a nice change of pace, eh? She looked down a little as she said this, as if she were if she were staring at her clothes or something. Oh, fair enough. Speaking of which, those clothes were way too big on her. All right, then next up, how about stopping by that place? Look over to your side, that jeans shop over there. And there stood a jeans and casual wear wholesale chain store that I'd seen other location, locations of on the normal highways. That kind of store isn't likely to be expensive either. We're stopping in, alright? I'm stopping now. No reply, but resistance, but no resistance either. It might well have been that it would be better for me to think of her non-replies as answers to the affirmative or something. We went into the store. She peered curiously around the two huge floors of the place, looking into every single corner there was. She was as without words as she always had been, and she may not have looked much different from her usual. But this was a little different from the way she was when she was watching that boring TV that reflected nothing. She examined item after item of clothing and seemed to be considering the prices. And then, whenever she tried on a new outfit, she'd come running up to me and... <laughs> what do I think? I think that it looks pretty good on you. No, I don't think so. And in this fashion, she tried on outfit after outfit, coming to show it off to me every single time. She did not know one smile or let any facial expression out, but it seemed to me that she was somehow happy about this. Alright, have you decided? Saying this, she sewed me her final outfit, a 
a pretty shirt and a short skirt. What she'd selected did make her look like a middle or high school student, but she seemed to be pleased enough. Now, if memory served, she told me in the past that she was older than me. But no matter how I looked, that just didn't seem true. Such the us opposite in fact that I couldn't help but smile. But you know, maybe it would be better if that skirt were a bit longer. Oh no 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 no, I'm not, I'm not saying it doesn't look good on you at all. See, it's cold you know, and in that kind of outfit... When she spoke these words, I saw a little pink rise to her pale face for a girl who has always kept herself absolutely emotionless. Could it be that she was blushing? The first expression of emotion that I'd ever seen from her. Back on the road again. The somewhat noisy silver cope speeding along underneath the high, high heavens of winter. Got it. She was acting as the navigator as usual. In no time at all, we have entered Gifu Prefecture. But if this were as usual, she'd been only looking out the window at nothing. But now, she was checking herself in the side mirror over and over as if well pleased. Checking herself in that mirror as she didn't want me to catch her doing it. Nani? Well, it looks like you're pretty happy with those clothes, that's all. With that, she stopped looking at the side mirror mirror. But after a little while, she started checking herself as I <laughs> Again, as I watched. So there were awfully cute things about her as well. And even if something was something as small as this, as normal as normal could be, I thought it very cute. And now I'm getting really depressed because they are dying! Why do I play these type of things that make me cry? Around when the sun had darkened into the night, ro some roadside somewhere, around when we'd finished our dinner, convenience store again. I wonder what's happened since we left. The white vinyl ID bracelet hanging loosely along my wrist. I murmured those words as I looked at the inscriptions my blood type and name, and then the name of the hospital. Do you think they're in an uproar? Definitely. Yeah. Parents, friends and the doctors. And even if it were only a paper-thin display on their part, it was a, still a little sorry to think that they might be worried. My bad, father, everyone. I did something, something selfish without consulting anyone. <clears throat> what, what is it? I was instantly shocked by her sudden question, and then I was silent as I pondered upon it some time. Some. Come to think of it, I don't think I cried. I don't remember doing that either. At first I couldn't believe it was actually happening, as if it weren't part of reality at all. But maybe, just maybe, I did feel something, a little. One of my buddies from the Technical Institute brought a new car and he was complaining about how he'd had to take a huge loans. Some got their first jobs, others were still in school, some had children, others got dumped by their girlfriends. But I had no future, so in truth I think I wondered why it had to be me. Even if I told myself that this was fate, I think I did feel as if I couldn't accept that. Then how about you? 
Yeah, did you cry or curse Faith? And why? Is that so? No way to despair if you'd given up from the beginning. Not fun to turn your back that way, but not difficult either. But I couldn't help but feeling that it, it was just too sorrowful that way. Or could it have been that in her case, there was no other possible course of action? Huh? Wolves? She abruptly changed the topic on me. Why was that? Why three years for wolves and nine years for donkeys? She never these words as she looked out of the window impassively. So was this the thing that she told herself to resign herself to abandon herself to her fate? The midwinter sky at sunset, our progress straight through 21st road. The flickering white specks dancing in the twilight sky. It was starting to snow and snow hard. Yeah, it's snowing. And sure enough, it looked like there was snow covering the roadsides. I had no idea when we'd entered a region of heavy snow, but as far as the eye could see, everything was draped in white. This was somewhat concerning. As far as I could tell, these tyrants weren't the studless variety. If we ran into any snow heavier than this, it was likely that we're going to be in trouble. Hey, does it snow here a lot? See, if the snow's much more than this, it'll be tough. There wasn't any sh snow on the road right now, but it would be no surprise to encounter frozen road segments from here and now out. And given that, it could be very well become necessary to equip tire chains or something that they hadn't gone over in training. So, do you know? Well, yeah, you told me that earlier, but what if... What I want to know is if it snows a lot there. She answered somehow desolate. And it made me feel that there was something incongruous here. For someone who knew the roads this well, who knew just about everything about this car, something like that should have been child's play. Very well, I'll just drive carefully. A beach. We had gotten off the car and we were looking at a lake. A chilly wind kicked up scattering a powder snow across the lake's frozen surface. And in its midst, the slowly began walk she slowly began walking toward that beach as if it were the ocean itself. This was a spectacle I had seen before. Are you asking me whether I think you would die without much pain if you walked in? I have no idea. I have no idea what your basis for that is. Quite a deductive ability you have there. Under the cold north wind and the falling snow, we argued jokingly, seriously, who knew about our one end point. And after a while, she began walking toward the lake once more. You don't have any intention to die today, do you? 
how much farther further was it until this Habachi island of which we'd spoken. It wasn't as if I particularly wanted to go there, but I didn't have any problem with going there either. But though we'd wandered without a purpose up until now, the seeds of final destination were be being born in us. The girl who had halted her progress toward the waters, even without my having to stop her. Most likely, that was the way it was for her too. January 27th, something something. Got it. From 8 back to 1. Under the guidance of her navigation, we were heading towards Kutatsu. Kusatsu. Yeah, we still have 3,000 yen or so. After we'd hit that clothing store, we'd only spend money on convenience store food. Why? What's up? The tollway? Why? Can't we get there through the normal highways? I see, so that's how you get to Araji Island. I did, didn't know it that well, but apparently in order to get there, we'd have to cross a bridge called Seto or something. Got it. Under her direction, I went from the Seta interchange to the Nation Expressway. Compared to all the roads we'd been so far, it was obvious that this was what a real expressway was. No traffic, lights, a beautiful perspective seemed pretty simple to even a beginner like me. But as I got on the rightmost lane, I could hear a terrific sound behind me. At first I had no concept of passing lane or anything, but as I got used to it, the expressway was almost fun. That's a pretty incredible car. Some car was passing us by at terrific speed, and without thinking, the two of us exchanged glances. And sure enough, from her passenger seat, she was looking somewhat different from usual. While usually she'd be staring out the window into the distance, today she was looking around at other cars with great interest. Speaking of which, she knew a lot about cars for some reason or another, didn't she? I pointed at the car that just have blown past us. Hey, hey, what kind of car is that? A quiz to pass the time, see? Toyota Celica. Overview. And the one we just overtook? Stodoe, Kusara. Wow, you know a lot. To tell the truth, I didn't know whether she was right or not. But it was really pleasant to hear her words coming from her usual silent lips. So I kept plying her with questions. She even told me about the two cars that were just passing us now. But I'm willing to bet you, you won't know what that is. I pointed at a truck, not a car. As I spoke, I wanted to see a little per perplexity seep into that expressionless face of hers. So you don't know trucks that well then? Nissan Atlas. Oh, wow, you're incredible. I'd been planning on teasing her, but instead she'd gone straight over my head. Isn't that level of knowledge something to be proud about? So. Yeah, I think you could toot your own horn about it. She had no words in response. It felt like she was blushing a little bit. So she loved cars after all. Then when we get there, want to try driving? It'll be fine. Driving along the beach will be fun, don't you think? If we went all the way to Awaji Island, then there would be a lot of places without any people. 
and this car had a stick shift, so I thought she might have fun driving it. If you want, I'll teach you. Although, to be honest, I'm a completely beginner myself. Hmm, <laughs> that was really nice. Um, it made me cry. That, that was my first time. I've been like close to tears, but I... The fact when they talk about um, the stuff that other people can have and what they can't have, that kind of hits me hard the most and just it would be it will be really tough when some like one of those young ones will die and I think they will grow up to like each other in this time that they had together so the other one is going to be really crushed Emotion train! Choo -choo. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all of the love and support. And I will see you in the chapter 6. Echo.